Hey guys, it's Lexi, and in this video I'm going to be talking about how to decide whether to do a GPR or AGD to specialize or to go straight into practicing dentistry. So first I'm going to talk about why you might want to go straight into practicing dentistry after you graduate. This could be in the form of a corporate office, private practice, or even in a federally qualified health center or for the military. For those of you guys who have military obligations or who have signed a contract to work in an underserved area, you may actually be required to go straight into practicing and then for others you might decide that you just want to start making an income especially after being in school for so long and maybe seeing some of your peers from college already establish their careers there may be some temptation to start making money another factor to consider is if you have significant student loan debt it can also be tempting to just start making an income you want to also consider how much confidence and skill you have from dental school so everyone is at a different level after they graduate from dental school and some students may feel more confident than others. If you feel like you're ready for more independent learning and you would be willing to just work with a mentor in a little bit less of a supervised environment compared to dental school, then you may be ready to start going into private practice and having someone mentor you in more complex procedures. Another thing to consider is that if you do decide to pursue general dentistry, you can continue to perform a wider variety of procedures compared to specializing where you kind of narrow down what procedures you're going to be performing. Another pro of general dentistry is that you're going to be less dependent on referrals compared to specialists. Also, you could always decide to go into practicing right out of dental school and then perhaps go back and specialize later. So what about a GPR or an AGD? GPR stands for General Practice Residency and an AGD stands for an Advanced Education in General Dentistry. These are typically one-year residency programs that are going to allow you to gain additional speed, confidence, and experience on top of what you've gotten from dental school. And one major reason that students will decide to pursue one of these residencies is in order to increase their exposure to more complex procedures. And you can really gain these valuable experiences if you do one of these residency programs. And then if you do decide that in private practice you want to place implants, that can be a great way to expand what your practice can offer. And it can make you more confident in learning these more difficult procedures while still having some sort of faculty member there to guide you. It can also improve your chances for acceptance into specialty programs. So specifically if you're interested in pursuing an endodontic residency program, uh, GPR programs are looked very highly upon especially and so by doing one of those programs it can help to increase the competitiveness of your application. You may also have the ability to treat patients with special needs or complex healthcare needs and and that's particularly true if you do a program that's hospital-based, and that will allow you to even get exposure to working with an interprofessional team. So oftentimes in private practice, you're not going to be coordinating as much with a pharmacist or a physician like you would be in a hospital setting. So if you think that you may even be interested in pursuing dentistry in a hospital setting, then doing one of these hospital-based programs could be a good option for you. And then finally, you can decide that you want to specialize. And reasons that you might want to specialize include a desire to narrow your focus into a more specific area of dentistry, or maybe even to work with a specific patient population. So for example, if you decide to pursue prosthodontics, you're probably going to be focusing more on a geriatric or adult patient population. Whereas if you work in pediatric dentistry, that allows you to work with a younger patient population. You might also just want to continue your education in dentistry. And if that's the case, then pursuing a specialty program is going to allow you to delve further into the literature of that particular area of dentistry. You also can consider that the hourly income for certain specialties on average is going to be higher than general dentistry. And so that's another factor that you can consider in terms of the financial aspect of specializing. You also would have to factor in though that you would have certain amount of years depending on the specialty program of lost income. Another thing to consider is that if there are certain dental procedures in general dentistry that you find less desirable or less enjoyable that you can sort of avoid these procedures by deciding to specialize in a particular area of dentistry that you do find more enjoyable. So if you decide you want to specialize, you're going to have to decide which particular dental specialty you want to pursue. I'm going to briefly go through the different dental specialties with you guys and then maybe just a few factors that you could consider. So I'm going to start by talking about endodontics and admittedly I'm a little bit biased because I'm starting 
starting an endodontic residency program this summer. With that said, I'm going to try to be as neutral as possible as I go through the different dental specialties with you guys. Also, I just have some ideas that I jotted down about each specialty. This is not an objective truth about each specialty, and so please understand that there are more factors to consider. These are just some things that came to my head as I was putting together these slides, and so definitely if you are interested in a specific specialty, I encourage you guys to have your own list of pros and cons and to really delve deep into understanding what you would like or not like about certain specialties when you're making your decision. So for endodontics, one thing to consider is that you're primarily going to be working with an adult patient population and most of the procedures are going to be completed in just a couple of visits. With that said, you are of course going to have follow-up to assess the outcome of your treatment and sometimes in cases of trauma, you're going to have to have the patient come back for multiple appointments. It's not the same sort of in-process treatment like you would see with a denture, where you're going to have a certain treatment planned and it's going to be in process for six or so appointments. Another thing to think about is that you're going to have longer procedures. Typically for endodontics, it's going to be longer appointments with fewer patients in a typical day. Another thing is you're going to be doing both surgical and non-surgical procedures. And so you're primarily probably going to be doing non-surgical root canal therapy as a typical bread and butter of endodontics, but you're also going to have some of those surgical procedures as well. And then you want to also consider that a lot of the times patients have anxiety regarding root canal treatment. And so you're going to have to be managing patients who come to you in pain and may be more anxious than patients who typically go to the dentist. With that said, in dentistry in general, we tend to deal with anxious patients. But I think that endodontics tends to attract patients who are in pain. And so that can kind of heighten the anxiety a little bit. And then finally, endodontics has minimal lab work compared to other specialties. Moving on to orthodontics. So typically in orthodontics, you're going to have a younger patient population. With that said, of course, you're still going to have adults who are seeking orthodontic treatment as well, whether that be in the form of clear aligners more commonly or even for fixed appliances. But typically speaking, you're going to have a younger patient population. And another factor to consider is that you're going to have a lot of in-process treatment just by the very nature of orthodontics. And so part of that is going to be making sure that you have the patient come back for multiple follow-up appointments and ensuring that the patients comply with with treatment. One thing that's great about orthodontics is that it has perhaps the best ergonomics in dentistry because you're not going to be bending over the patient for as long period of time. And also a lot of the times orthodontic assistants are doing a lot of the um, placement of the brackets and the wires. So that's another thing to think about. You tend to have multiple shorter appointments for orthodontics throughout the day. So in contrast to what we talked about with endodontics, where it's going to be longer appointments for orthodontics, a lot of the appointments are going to be short and quick and you're going to have to move from one patient to the other relatively quickly. Also, a lot of what the doctor is doing is going to be outside of patient appointments. So there's a lot of planning and problem solving that goes into orthodontics outside of the actual appointment time. And I'm not saying that this is work that's going to be brought home necessarily, but it's just work that's done outside of the actual presence of the patient. And orthodontics is really incorporating physics into problem solving tooth mechanics and it allows you to transform a patient's smile. So it can really have a positive impact on the patient's self-esteem. Like I mentioned before, you also have to consider patient compliance and orthodontics is going to have some lab work involved. Okay, so moving on to periodontics, typically you're going to be working with an adult patient population. Again, this is not meant to be black and white. I understand that there are also children that can have genetic conditions that require periodontal treatment from an early age. I'm just speaking that general Generally, most of the patients are going to be adults, um, but I do recognize these exceptions. Also, most of the procedures are going to be completed in a couple of visits. And what I'm trying to say with that is it doesn't have the same in-process treatment like we might see with orthodontics or even for dentures and prosthodontics. And so if you want to have it where your procedures are completed in just a couple of visits, that's one thing that you can consider with periodontics. Also, the ergonomics are probably similar to general dentistry 
dentistry and there's a focus on surgical procedures. So if you really like the surgical aspect of general dentistry, then you may be interested in pursuing periodontics. And ultimately, periodontics is going to focus on restoring the supporting structures of the teeth and allow the patient to maximize the longevity of their dentition. Another final thing to say is that periodontics has little lab work compared to other specialties. So moving on to prosthodontics, prosthodontics is going to have primarily an adult patient population, especially geriatric patient populations, because typically it's going to be older patients who are going to come visit a prosthodontist. And you're going to have a lot of in-process treatment for removable pros. So if you think of a complete upper and lower denture, that's going to be a multi-step process before it's ready for delivery. And I would say that the ergonomics is similar to that of general dentistry. If you consider removable pros, a lot of that is done outside of the mouth. So the ergonomics might be a little bit better, but you still have crowns and bridges. And so I would say that it's pretty similar to general dentistry. And prosthodontics is going to allow you to reconstruct the function and aesthetics of the entire dentition, but it does require significant lab work. So if you are interested in prosthodontics, make sure that lab work is something that you would enjoy doing. So now moving on to oral and maxillofacial surgery, which really is a unique specialty in that it requires significantly more training after dental school than other specialties do. So if you're interested in oral and maxillofacial surgery, you're going to be looking at four or six year programs. And the patient population that you work with is going to vary, partly dependent on if you choose to work in private practice versus a hospital setting. And you can have exposure to medically complex patients or also patients with special needs. I would say that the ergonomics is similar to general dentistry, and you have a very strong focus in the biomedical sciences. Typically, a lot of the training is going to be similar to that of medical school, if not actually completing medical school if you choose to pursue a six-year residency program. And then you also have the ability to treat head and neck cancer as well as craniofacial abnormalities. And that's largely why it requires the additional years of training to be significantly longer compared to other dental specialties. And oral and maxillofacial surgery has little lab work associated with it. Moving on to pediatric dentistry. Of course, this is going to entail treating patients that are children. And also something that's not considered is that a lot of times patients with special needs are going to also seek treatment either at an oral surgery office or in a pediatric dentistry office. And the ergonomics are similar to general dentistry. You're going to have to manage behavioral issues, which makes sense if you consider the patient population that you're working with. And I would say that pediatric dentistry is in many ways similar to general dentistry, but of course it's a more narrow scope. And then you're also going to have the ability to shape a child's impression of dentistry and really establish an important foundation for them, both in terms of their attitudes as well as their actual dentition. And there is some lab work associated with pediatric dentistry. And then here are a list of the remaining dental specialties that I didn't go through specifically. And this isn't because I'm saying that these are any less important than the other dental specialties. These are just honestly less commonly pursued in a typical dental school class. With that said, if you have any interest, I would highly recommend that you talk to faculty at your school that are focused on these specific areas, whether that be oral and maxillofacial radiology or pathology, oral medicine, dental anesthesiology, if you want to work more in dental public health, or if you're interested in like TMD, migraine, trigeminal neuralgia, then you could look at perhaps specializing in oral facial pain. So any of these, again, I would seek a additional resources just because my knowledge personally is quite limited on these specialties. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and also hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date when I upload new videos.